This lesson will teach you control valve terminology. Control valve operating principles and control valve repairing procedures and techniques. A control valve is a device that regulates flow by producing a variable pressure drop. It consists of two major sections, the valve and the actuator. The actuator supplies the power to operate the valve. We will discuss the valve portion first. Valve bodies vary in design. Globe bodies are most commonly used. This globe valve body is single seated. And this one is double seated. Double seated valves are widely used. The flow into the valve splits, half going upward and half going downward. The upward and downward forces on the plugs tend to cancel each other. Since the forces created by the flow against the plugs cancel, a double seated valve requires a relatively small actuator force to move it. However, because there are two seats, leakage through the valve can be expected. Normal leakage can be 5% of the maximum amount of flow the valve can allow. Notice that the flow direction is into the plug. This is normally the upstream side of a double seated regulator. This is the upstream side of the valve. Notice the plugs. The double seated control valve body consists of plugs, upper and lower seat rings, guide bushings, blind head, bonnet, packing, box gland, flange, flange stud nuts, packing, lubricating ring, plug stem pin, body stud nuts, lubricator, lubricator valve, and clamping nut. Single-seated globe valves are used in applications that require a tight shutoff capability. Since all the flow force acts on the single plug, it can take a great amount of force to operate the valve. Flow can be channeled under a single seat plug to aid the valve in opening. Or the flow can be channeled over the plug to assist in closing. Three-way valves are used for mixing or diverting services. This valve is mixing ports A and B to yield mixture AB. This valve is diverting AB to either port A or B. A three-way valve proportions rather than throttles the flow. Saunders valves are used to control corrosive or viscose materials. A flexible diaphragm is forced against a weir. Maximum operating temperatures, typically 200 degrees Fahrenheit or below, are limited by the diaphragm material. Angle valves are used when the process contains suspended particles. The fluid enters at the side and discharges at the bottom. Therefore, the area of erosion is away from the plug and seats. Cage valves are sometimes called top entry valves. The cage valve body is of the globe type, but the internal parts are of a different design. Butterfly valves require considerable actuator force to operate them at high pressure differentials. However, they are low in cost and will permit about twice the flow rate that a double seated valve of the same size will permit. Variations of ball type valves include the V-ball 
and a camflex. The camflex uses an eccentrically rotating spherical plug. When the plug seats itself, the plug arms flex and a tight shutoff is obtained. You will now perform segment 2.3.1, workbook exercise 1. In addition to differences in body types, control valves also differ in the construction of their internal parts. These internal parts, labeled the valve trim, consists of plug, seats, and guides. The parabolic plug is very common. It can be single or double seated. The parabolic plug can be used to throttle dirty materials. The V-port plug is also frequently used. It is sometimes used to eliminate high-pitched noise that is characteristic in valves that have parabolic trim. V-port trim, due to the closed tolerance between the plug and seat, has a tendency to stick or gall when used in dirty or corrosive surfaces. Quick opening trim is used where on-off control action is required. Quick opening trim does not throttle. Cage trim derives its name from the fact that the plug is in a cage. Cage trim can be balanced or unbalanced. This cage trim has ports in the plug, so there is no pressure drop across the plug. This is balanced cage trim. The seat ring prevents leakage through the valve when the valve is closed. Unbalanced cage trim, as with any unbalanced type trim, requires more actuator power for operation. Cage trim, the cage, seat ring, and gaskets, can usually be removed and replaced without removing the valve body from the line. Control valve plugs can be guided several ways. A valve can be top and bottom guided, top and port guided, port guided, and control valve plugs can also be cage guided. Now, work exercise two in your workbook. Trim shapes enable control valves to have a particular trim characteristic. Trim characteristic is the relationship between the percent flow through a valve and the percent trim position, or lift. The shape of a single or double-seated parabolic plug determines its characteristics. The shape of the ports in a V-port plug will determine its characteristic. The size and shape of the ports in a cage determine the trim characteristic of a cage valve. The common trim characteristics are linear, equal percentage, and quick opening. This chart will graphically explain a linear trim characteristic. Notice the vertical numbers represent flow rate percent. The horizontal numbers represent valve stem travel, or lift, in percent full scale. Observe the red line. The red line represents 50% valve stem travel. The flow rate is also 50% of maximum. The blue line represents 25% valve travel, which results in 25% flow. The green line represents 75% valve travel, which results in 75% flow. 
A linear trend characteristic will provide flow that is directly proportional to lift. Equal percentage trim characteristic, sometimes called ratio trim characteristic, can be expressed by this formula. Percentage increase in flow equals the increase in flow divided by the original flow times 100. Assume our equal percentage trim valve lift is changed from 30% to 40%. The resulting flow increase would be from 4% to 6.4% or 2.4%. If we apply our equal percentage formula, we can see that for a 10% lift change, we obtained a 60% change in flow. Suppose we move the valve from 90% to 100% of its lift. The flow increases from 62.5% to 100%, or a net flow increase of 37.5%. The percentage increase is 37.5 divided by 62.5 times 100, or 60%. Each equal increment of lift will increase the flow by a fixed percent. As we have calculated, a 10% increase in lift will produce a 60% increase in the original flow. Quick opening trim characteristic is self-explanatory. From the graph, we can see that only 30% valve lift results in 60% total flow. Perhaps you are wondering why trim characteristics vary. Control valves have different trim characteristics, so a process can be stable. For instance, a linear characteristic has stable qualities when it operates in a process system where the process produces most of the system pressure drop. A control valve with equal percentage characteristic trim is stable when the control valve itself must produce most of the pressure drop. Now, work exercise three in your workbook.